Good morning, everybody. Today is Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021. And this is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. Uh, I'm Tricia Gordon at the University of Virginia, and I'm facilitating today. And uh, I did paste the Etherpad link in chat. Um, you can scroll up to get to it and go ahead and sign in on our Etherpad if you would. Uh, let's see. And then we're going to go ahead and move on into announcements. So does anybody have any announcements today? Good morning, everybody. This is Wilma. Um, I have a, a, an announcement about Sakai Days. So that's going to happen uh, later this month, February 26th or 25th and 26th. Um, usually in January, we have Sakai Camp in Orlando in person, but obviously not this year. So um, we're doing an online meeting instead, and it, part of it is going to be our, our PMC quarterly meeting. Um, but then we also wanted to add a little time to that um, to kind of uh, take place with some of the strategic planning discussions that we have at Sakai Camp um, and just try to do them in a more compressed um, online format. So um, the agenda, there's a link there to the tentative agenda, but it's going to be um, Thursday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern and then a break for lunch um, and then come back at one o'clock from one to three eastern and then friday just the morning so 10 a.m to 12 p.m eastern on friday and um <clears throat> again the pmc quarterly meeting you know kind of standing agenda items um, are happening thursday morning um, community folks are certainly welcomed and encouraged to attend if you have an interest. Uh, you don't have to stay for the whole thing. If you want to pop in for part of the day um, or part of the meeting, that's totally fine. Um, and we're encouraging folks to suggest um, topics to discuss in the afternoon. We kind of wanted to make that more of an unconference time period where if people had um, specific topics that they wanted to discuss or if maybe certain working groups um, wanted to um, use the time to kind of brief the community at large on things that they're doing or maybe get feedback on stuff, um, that, that would be a good opportunity for that. So if you have any thoughts about things that you'd like to talk about with your fellow Sakai folks, um, feel free to um, po post those in the agenda and, um, and we'll do a little bit of kind of agenda um, management at the start of the session to kind of figure out what we're going to cover and what's going to go when. Um, but uh, those links are there, so I encourage you guys to think about attending. And um, it'll be in uh, Big Blue Button. So we'll be using um, Big Blue Button both days. Awesome. Thank you so much, Wilma. I'm excited um, for Sakai Days. Sad that we're not able to get together in person, especially in Orlando, where we have so much fun. But uh, hopefully... Yeah. Maybe um, sometime soon, soon. <laughs> we'll be able to, to get yeah. back to that tradition because that was so awesome that, you know, it's it's worthwhile. Um, wonderful. So I think we're ready to uh, do any other announcements before we move into our main topic. Oh, one other thing um, I almost forgot. Um, for those of you who don't normally attend the um, core team call um, the we're hoping to have a release candidate out this week for Sakai 21 so that's the goal um, we have to kind of take the temperature of QA you know um, I think this evening is the QA planning call to see if they're going to you know feel comfortable um, doing a release candidate at the end of the week but that's that's our goal so hopefully we will uh, that moves us a whole lot closer to getting the actual general release for Sakai 21 out. Um, so we, wow. we're aiming to get that out before the end of the month. Wow, fantastic. That seems like um, the earliest we've ever gotten a release for, for the current year in out. Yeah, our goal was actually earlier than that. <laughs> so they, all, they always slip just a little bit, but um, but we are in pretty good shape. And there's actually a lot of fixes already um, in the branch. There's more than 300 fixes that have been um, 
incorporated into the the branch since it was cut for 21 so there, that's good that means there's a lot a lot of a lot of work a lot of fixes fixes have already gone in um yeah. so um, hopefully we'll get that release out soon and it will be one of the earlier ones that we've done so that's earlier exactly. in the calendar year impressive i think really kudos to all the developers and the qa teams who have worked on that that's that's phenomenal okay marty i am going to give you presenter privileges so i'm going to try to here we go for make presenter so um Welcome, Marty Supkoff, everybody from Duke University. He's going to lead a discussion on creating a better quiz confirmation page. Thank you, Marty, for that. And I don't know if you have any slides or anything you want to share um, on the screen, um, but if so, you're, you should have all the permissions to do so now. Okay, thanks. I don't have slides, but I may pull up a couple things here and there. Right. Um, so this kind of comes about because uh, we've had a number of reports from students going through a quiz, answering questions. Most of the time, it's one massive quiz of like 75 questions on a single page, and they've been working on it for an hour or two. And then they submit the quiz, and there's a whole bunch of blank answers. Um, there are certain things we can check for in regards to like seeing in the logs, did they potentially go to another page? Uh, we can't see if they had a second tab open for sure, um, but we know that's usually one of the causes for this type of thing of the session being disrupted um, or if they're just doing something else wacky, maybe their internet cuts out and some of the stuff doesn't get auto-saved or something like that. Um, so previously I was at a Moodle institution and I uh, just kind of have a compare and contrast uh, when looking at the two LMSs and I thought there would be some improvements that we could do through um, Sakai's kind of confirmation page. So this would be the page that students hit right before the end of a quiz. Um, so I guess I'll share some stuff here. <coughs> All right, so you guys, <clears throat> All right, so you guys seeing the mirror, hall of mirrors there? Um, so I've set up just a kind of a test quiz on the uh, nightly server right now on trunk. Um, I also have a student account set up or logged in. So let me pull that up. Um, so this is a student in the same course. If they start the quiz, uh, this one actually, I guess I set up for one question per page. They're going through the quiz. And now when you're going between pages, the questions get saved. So that's you know, what we try to advise instructors, create, you know, pages or parts, excuse me, um, that are like five to maybe 15 questions at most. So that way the students aren't on a page for an hour and a half and potentially you're gonna deal with issues that way. Um, so let me go ahead and answer some of these. And then, so when they get to the final page, this is all they see. They don't see anything in regards to maybe some of those questions didn't get saved. Um, there's just nothing there to let the student know that everything's okay before you hit this final submit button. Um, and I took some screenshots. Let me pull those up. Um, so this is essentially the same page uh, with no timer. Um, I did discover something that's probably should be submitted as a JIRA, and I'll do that after the meeting. Um, if there is a timer, it kind of overlays this top text of assessment submission warning. Not a big deal, but probably something we don't want overlaying on it. Marty, uh, I wonder yeah. if you could uh, make your screen a little bit bigger for us. I'm having a hard time seeing what's on. Sure. Uh, let me, at least for this picture, I can zoom in. Okay. Um, and then let's go back. I can zoom in here as well uh, when needed. Okay. Uh, so essentially here, it's you just don't see anything. So then comparing to what Moodle has, um, it's a lot more informational. Um, you similarly get to kind of a summary of the attempt, but with the, the Moodle instance, what you get is a list of the questions. You get a text indicator of answer saved or not yet answered. So if they accidentally skipped a question or if, uh, you know, auto save didn't work for that question or something that just didn't save the question, there's an indication of what is not saved yet. 
Um, they've got a button that returns to attempt that's similar to Sakai. You can go to the previous. Um, and then there, it also tells you if there's a timer or excuse me, a uh, deadline for it, it lets you know there, submit button. Um, and then the timer is over on the right-hand side as well. Uh, this navigation is just something that Moodle has as well. It shows throughout the uh, quiz so that students can jump between questions. Um, the gray indicators are uh, indicating that something is saved as well. Um, so there's that. Is, this is kind of not, not really too focused on this one too much uh, being something that we should do. I'm more focused on creating kind of this page over here of the status for the questions and potentially having all the questions there so that if they do miss one, I don't have to go back through uh, like a 75 question page scroll down to the one I want, I can actually click on a question and be taken directly there. Um, from an administrator standpoint, I just kind of put some notes over here. Ideally, there's something that logs in the database as well to let us know, hey, these questions are saved uh, because we have run into instances where a student says, I totally saved question one as A and it changed it to B when I saved it. Uh, right now, we don't have any sort of tracking of that to know for sure. Um, so not being a dev or a database analyst, I'm not sure how that would be done, um, but that would be cool if we could track that as just like a single log. It would be a massive, potentially uh, single record, um, but maybe potentially it can be split out into a log per question or something like that. I'm not sure how it would be implemented, but we can get like Earl and Adrian's advice on potentially doing that. Um, so the main goal is to create kind of a page of either having hyperlinks to questions and at a minimum creating some sort of answer, not answer. Uh, so I want to kind of show this is kind of a compare and contrast to what we have right now in Sakai. Uh, before I go through and create a JIRA, Duke is potentially looking at funding something for this. Um, so we're looking for others' advice on potentially what else can be included, what we've missed, what would be nice to have there. Um, we have heard thoughts from other people we've brought it up to of instead of not just answered saved, it actually gives the answer here. Uh, I'm not sure how that would look from a design perspective, especially since if it just says A or B for multiple choice, that's not going to really help a student too much. And then if there's essay questions, um, displaying an entire couple paragraphs of essays is not going to be super helpful either. Um, so maybe starting out with a minimum of just answered saved, not answered, uh, or like text is kind of where we want to head first. Um, so I guess I'll kind of open it up to the floor uh, and kind of take notes to see if there's other thoughts, um, changes they would think uh, that should be included in something like this. Great. I can zoom in anywhere as well if needed. Thank you. Tiffany, I think you're wanting to comment. Yeah, so we actually have some of these indicators already in different pages. Um, I think if you could just replicate the code from the table of contents to have that same content display on this confirmation page. You'd already have the indication of question answered or not, which is that, you know, the circle with the completed or not, you know, they do have um, an alt text on them. And the, uh, the question text of each question um, and possibly the link back to the question if you want to return to that question to change your answer or verify your answer. Um, OK, I hadn't thought of the table of content, so I don't think here I have that. That's a setting, isn't it? That's no. Set on the no, it's always there. If you go to previous. Oh, I had, so that would be bringing it. OK, you're talking about bringing it out then from here to yeah. there. OK, copying yeah. that content. And if you go back, go back to the uh, one of the question pages, any one of them. And open up the question progress box on the side, the far right. You've got that indicator already. Uh, that's the exact same indicator like you were talking about with the visual of whether the question has mm -hmm. been answered or not. Um, that could be made to display on the, um, yeah, of course, there's no table of contents on linear access, but it does display the question progress box if linear access is enabled. And it does, does it or does it not? link to specific questions from there i think it, it does, does not if linear access is selected you cannot navigate to different questions 
That's true. Yeah. So, so that, it in that regard, then it would just kind of remove it outright. So if you get to that final page, you're you, you're done. Uh, there, you could see if stuff is unanswered, but you can't go back in that essence because the instructor has set it to linear access. Um, I do. Um, there was one. I think that bug got fixed. Of where, yeah, it looks like it. Of where clicking on certain table of content stuff was like popping up some error message. I remember seeing a jar on that. So I, that just reminded me of that. So that's good. That's fixed. Um, okay. So I'm jotting these down so that way it sounds like less work has to be done and um, potentially bringing out some of these items that are displayed during the quiz actually also end up on the final confirmation page as well, because these both end up getting removed and it's pretty much a blank slate of, are you sure you want to submit? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if we could just get that content from table of contents to display, um, sort of as it does on the table of contents, unless there's linear access, in which case linear access would just have the text of the question and not the links to them, um, I think that would, cover sort of the use case you're describing here um, and then it would be an additional uh, feature to add the answer text. I'm not sure how that would be done because you have you know things like matching, have multiple possible segments and answers, multiple blank fill in the blanks, you know short essay could get yeah. quite long, you know yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, it yeah, could get agree. pretty messy if, if, if there's a lot of different question types. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I just, there was one person I remember bringing up locally that we kind of discussed it with that thought that would be useful. And it does, it clear, it would be useful for the end student, but it would also at the same time not be super helpful to just show an answer without any question text. And if you're going to show the question text, you're just going to redisplay the entire quiz. And if a student's kind of running down stuff, it's, this is useful sometimes, but overkill, I would think. Yeah. You know what? What would be cool for information screen for sure, I think. What would be cool would be to take the table of contents and have each of the question texts there be kind of a um, a collapsed section header that you could open up to see a preview of your answer to that question and then click back to, you know, navigate back to the question if you want to change said answer. So having it like, uh, if you had the collapsible question, having it be a hundred characters or something for the question text, so that way it doesn't completely show really, really long questions. And then having a drop down if you select it to see what you answered, and then you can yeah. click go back. Yeah, because that's how the table of contents works, right? Like if your question text mm -hmm. is really long, the table of contents just displays the first, I don't know how many words of it. Um, I don't think it is that, a question. Why is that helpful though? I don't understand why that would be needed on a confirmation screen. I think just a, a link to a number is fine and they can just go click that link to see the question text again. Well, I meant if they wanted to be able to confirm, you know, their various uh, answers on the same page, if they could pop them open and sort of just take a quick look at them. Um, and Terry, you're commenting about not keyboard accessible collapsing in lessons. We're not talking about lessons or making it work like that at all. I, I was talking about making sections that are usable, like in tests and quizzes already in a settings page. And so I think also it just has to honor whether if if linear access has been set up, they there can be no navigation back to questions. Right. It can show whether they've been answered or not. They just can't navigate back to them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. yeah. Sorry. yeah if, if we're able to get that question um, progress kind of shown on essentially the, uh, let me pull back up. Uh, we're able to essentially get this, and I believe this is linking. Mm -hmm. If this is ends up on the confirmation page, um, 
I didn't set it up, but do you guys know offhand if 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 linear access is set, does this show it all or is it just the table of contents that gets removed? No, it shows it. The question progress shows whether you've completed something in um, in a linear access. It just doesn't okay. let you navigate in it. Okay. So then in that essence, if the if this ends up on the confirmation page, um, it seems like what it since this is currently hyperlinking, the command should be if it's linear access, it should just come do exactly whatever the question progress is telling it to do. So since it mm -hmm. turned that off during linear access, it doesn't have to kind of have a separate command built in for that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. If we're if we basically just make that question progress box display on the um confirmation page on the confirmation page we'd have some of what the use case you describe is yeah. um i think it would be beneficial to display the question text like it does in table of contents um but uh yeah and, and i think another another added layer of that would be to actually give some way of seeing their answers on the on the confirmation page. But again, that would be much more complex and I think beyond the scope of, of this project. I think utilizing the uh, existing code from table of contents or question progress box or, or combination thereof uh, would probably be the way to go. Yeah, and um, currently just yeah, doing- I think if you put the question progress bar on there, then maybe you could have it set to be open by default mm -hmm. so that people don't have to locate it to open it and see their progress because they might not notice it. That's right. Okay, I'll jot that one down. Heather made a comment. Heather, do you want to come on your mic and just share what you posted in the chat? Sure. I was just thinking that even if students can't go back to questions when linear access is set, at least they'd be able to look at this final page and say, uh, tell their instructors that they thought they'd answered question 14, but it was showing unanswered um, on submission, which is easier for their instructors or us to troubleshoot than just, I'm missing a question answer. I don't know what one. <laughs> For sure. And in those instances, yep. they, they could essentially just be stuck, which they or they wouldn't be in a different spot than they are now. They would just know beforehand, I guess, before they submit. That's right. Can I, can I say, I, I think it would be really cool if you could then send, when you send the email notification to students that says the date and time of submission, it also says which numbers are completed, like completed questions one through X. Didn't answer questions, whatever. <laughs> I know that's just like pie in the sky, wild thought, but. Yeah, I, I want to have something that kind of from an admin perspective, if we really did need to review logs, we can see what they answered. I just have no idea how that would be done from a database standpoint, because if it's if it would create one log with one uh, field that just mashes every single answer in. I got to imagine for really, really two really long uh, quizzes, like 200 questions, which are not normal, but happen enough um, that eventually the database can only fit so much text in a cell or a record. Um, but then also having a separate record saved for every single question seems like it'd be a terrible idea for the database as well. Yeah, I think that if there's going to be some um, some sort of storage of multiple iterations of an answer or changed answer uh, for a question, it would have to be uh, something that purges automatically after a set amount of time, uh, possibly defined at a system level, like you know, I don't know, two weeks after the thing is submitted or something. Um, but you know how, when and how those records are stored could be very problematic in terms of storage, uh, yeah, and database right. storage, and also the recording of it will take time. So students are students already complain of a test taking too long to load, but if we're saving every time they click a button, saving something, it's going to take more time. 
um, you know, logging. Yeah. logging it's safer, gonna, but yeah, they don't know that. Exactly. Exactly. So then they'll complain of it's taking forever for their pages to load <laughs> every time they select an answer. So I, I just created a second quiz to show. It looks like the table of contents doesn't truncate questions. Oh, really? Huh. At least I it, thought it, it did. Didn't. At least it didn't do it for the true false. Uh, I didn't create any other questions. So potentially separate questions do. Uh, that would be really mm -hmm. weird if separate questions did that. But I wouldn't say that's not far from what could happen. Well, then maybe I was thinking of the question pools where they're truncated. I know there's somewhere that oh, question text true. is like. Question, yeah. do it. Um, looks like, Terry, go lightly. You want to come on your mic so that it's part of the recording, your comment in the chat. Somebody mentioned in passing about <clears throat> showing the answers on the confirmation page, but that to me sounds like a real security issue because you've got the answers then on a page that can just be, you know, screen copied and passed around and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And unless you do randomizing or some site, some kind of way of assuring that answers can't be distributed that easily or even the questions themselves right yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm concerned about about test security issues with a lot of the conversation here but that one particularly alarmed me and mark has a couple of comments mark can you come on your mic and share what you sure um I'm, I'm unsure which of the two is of more interest to the group. Um, I uh, I think my recent comment was just a, a thought, uh, largely echoing Terry, um, in that uh, it, it's probably a lot easier from an instructor perspective to know that this proposed new feature is never going to show um, that the text of questions or of responses by students and is merely a confirmation that a question has been responded to or not. Um, and I think that allows it to be used more flexibly um, and almost as a, a thing that's enabled by default. Uh, something I, I didn't write within the chat, but um, I, I think I'll also certainly echo uh, considering Brock's recent experience with, uh, with large assessments is that uh, any sort of a performance uh, impact as a result of a new feature would be really, really troublesome. Uh, we've also had a lot of trouble with, uh, with these as of late, and I, I think we're not alone. Yeah. Yeah, I think not. I I think that not posting the entire question content, especially you know, for for all the reasons already mentioned, but also because it just becomes impossible to to parse. If you know, you just want to know if you answered them or didn't answer them on confirmation. And then Mark, you had another comment about confirmation of the confirmation page. Sure, uh, it, intentionally written to be cheeky. Um, <laughs> it's just a matter of uh, having it there. Is it something that students must acknowledge? And if so, um, am I the only one that is concerned around students not submitting as a result of the acknowledgments uh, there? Uh, we might recall the, the older challenge with Samago that I think has been addressed by a, a butt recoloring of all things, um, the publish and then publish again after the confirmation page. Um, that, that I think has allowed a lot more instructors now to actually fully publish uh, assessments if they're new to use in Samago. Uh, so, so this um, perhaps largely echoes that challenge with students. If um, if this proposed new feature is something that students must acknowledge, or is it merely just something that's provided after they submit um, the, the sorts of pros and, and, and cons around that? Uh, students um, having to confirm this um, uh, the, the confirmation uh, may actually allow them to self-correct if they have missed questions or if they um, did have a connectivity freeze or something like that 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 in some strange way um, negated their responses. Um, but on the other hand, if they do need to confirm it, uh, they may just not submit um, if that is part of the process. So, Mark, I, I think there may be some confusion. This is not adding an extra page. This is just modifying the existing one. So there's already this confirmation page. You click Submit for Grading on the last question page or the table of contents. Then you get to this confirmation page, and it says, are you sure you want to do it? And that is necessary for accessibility, to have some form of confirmation. 
Um, so, you know, people have talked about removing this submit for grading confirmation page before, uh, but I like the idea of adding the question progress box contents to it, you know, to indicate whether or not the student has completed the question and if possible to navigate back to them uh, if incomplete. Um, so, yeah. I'm, I'm following you, Tiffany. Um, it's uh, what concerns me is the amount of content that might need to be displayed on that page for large assessment um, and, and the way that that um, confirm the confirmation uh, as it were button is displayed. If it finds its way to the bottom of the page, uh, yeah. I think there'll be a, a significant challenge around students actually mm -hmm. confirming it. So we, we just, if there is a necessity to display that much information, that it, it, it needs to be easy for students still the spot that they've got one last thing to do. Yeah. So do you have a, a multi-part quiz example um, to show uh, on this? Because um, with a multi-part quiz, the parts will be collapsed in the question progress box. And that could be problematic on a confirmation screen. I, personally, I think all the questions should be listed, whether answered or not. And but I also agree with Mark that the final submission button needs to be prominent and above the fold, as they say, um, regardless of how many questions must be scrolled to to view, or maybe there's some way to um, wrap them around so they're not just one long well, page of one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> you could have what a about, submit button on the top and one at the bottom if it was a yeah. long page. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to suggest. Yeah, I, I third that. Uh, I think that would be better. That, so I, I pulled up the Moodle one just to see if it also had the up top and bottom. Um, I could imagine students selecting the one at the top if it's a really short quiz or they're in a rush to get it submitted by the deadline so they're not really going to review the confirmation because maybe they're just running out of time but for students that reach the confirmation with enough time to actually review they're going to scroll down down until they get to the end and then a submit for grading down there is the one they're going to select um, i think that'd be better than having some sort of like floating button that uh, maybe is on the side or something because that'd be kind of a weird uh, experience, in my opinion. <laughs> right. Also, harder for accessibility. I like the idea of having a button at the top and bottom of a page. And, you know, I know people get freaked out about it being really like if you have only one question and then you have two buttons right next to each other, you know, that that really bothers people in the assessment preview, having the button at the top and bottom of the page, too. Um, but uh, I, I think it's very helpful for accessibility. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts? I've taken a couple notes. Um, I can kind of just summarize some of them here. Uh, replicating the uh, question progress and the table of contents onto the confirmation page, so that way we're not you know, reinventing the wheel um, and work. Uh, linear access would have to not allow the hyperlink, and if the question pro if we're taking from the question progress, that should be uh, quote unquote quote unquote easy. Um, and then uh, having the question progress bar maybe be open by default. Uh, test security being an issue, so I think we're for the most part all jumping on that board of not having uh, too much question text in the answers. I know, Tiffany, you mentioned uh, it would be nice. Um, I think Terry brought up uh, how it could be very easily screenshot, though, um, and then shared out from there. Unless the questions are randomized, the text or random questions selected versus just one uh, quiz for all. Um, what other notes I got here? I think that's all I've got. Is there anything else I should note down um, to take with this? I just wanted to say I agree with the security concern, and and I think the one the one thing that I would say is that you know to uh, to go with Trisha's point that 
um, rather than display it like the question progress box displays, you know, like sort of a small box with the, the dots of complete or incomplete, um, it would be better to show it just as like a single list um, on the page and then have the button at the top and bottom. So, so more similar to the uh, Moodle, the Moodle one. It's so it's a mixture of the Moodle and the kind of table of contents. That's right. Okay, that's what I think. I think the Moodle one has a lot of helpful information on it too. That yeah, I did. A, I did a little bit of contents doesn't have um, like the. Uh, submission due date time left that's pretty cool um, i believe the timer may be floating um, i don't remember uh, mm -hmm. floating things are cool but then also other times floating things are not so cool right well the timer bar on ours already is floating um yeah i i put the link to the effect the jira uh sec 41966 uh, about that issue you mentioned of it covering content. Um, yeah. Oh, is there already one open for that? Yeah, it's been oh. open for quite a while, 41966. Uh, where did you post that? In the chat, I can copy and paste it again. Oh, no, it's just farther up when I, yeah, beginning of the presentation, got it. Up. Okay, I just want to log in and follow that. and. I mean, that, that seems like a, again, quote unquote, easy win. Um, it just, it's gotta get some love from my dad. So I'm following that now. Cool. I think we're all in agreement that question text should not be shown. Yeah. Cool, Marty, thank you for this, leading this discussion. I think this is, would be a huge improvement for students and support and instructors alike. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. I also have, if we're looking for new agenda items for next week, I've had <clears throat> I had one of our consultants mention something about uh, permissions within the grade book uh, for TAs, kind of just the UI for that. So um, yeah. I can bring that up next week if you guys are looking for something. Yeah, it's actually a couple of weeks from now, but yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Permissions in grade book for TAs. I make, shall I go ahead and put it on the agenda for, for the next meeting? That's going to be the, um, what day is that? That's the 17th. Uh, let me put that on my counter because I should probably, <laughs> otherwise I'll forget. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you. I actually have a JIRA for TA permissions in gradebook as well. That's SEC 42493. Taking a look at it now. Um, Wonderful. This is a great conversation. I appreciate it. Okay. We're, Charles, are you trying to come on the mic? I can't tell because, no. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to jump into a mini Jira Palooza, and I'm going to paste the first one here for 4826, and I'm going to open this up and share it. and try to make it bigger. All right, hold on, I gotta expand my window some for you guys. And Tiffany, you posted this one, so do you wanna walk us through it? Uh, I'm working on some help tickets right now, but. Um, <laughs> oh, this is uh, a future request to show student feedback for only the questions they answered incorrectly. And I need to log in here. Yeah, um, so this is something we've gotten a lot of requests for lately, uh, where instructors just want to show students um, 
feedback on on their incorrectly answered questions. Um, in some cases, they want the students to uh, do a, a retake and just answer the ones they got wrong, you know, again. Um, or uh, they want the students to see um, feedback on things that they got wrong in practice for a um, for a, a future exam or something like that. But they don't want to reveal all the questions because of that security risk that um, Terry and um, Mark uh, brought up earlier of uh, showing questions to students uh, that they're going to reuse in future classes. So they only want, so some instructors want to only give feedback to students on a question they've answered incorrectly. Yeah, they just want to show them, um, you know, like, for example, correct in incorrect answer feedback. They just want to show incorrect answer feedback, but only show the questions um, that would get that. <laughs> Anything that the student answered right, they don't want to show them again after the test is completed. Hmm. And so you have a question here, how would this feedback display during an assessment if they enabled immediate feedback? Right. I mean, would it even be allowed for immediate feedback? Maybe not. Ooh. We do like to make Samago as complex as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so kind of coming at it from another angle, because I've had plenty of instructors that also want to show results or questions and answers for students that never attempt the quiz uh, because they plan to reuse the question maybe in a final or something. Um, so how that would interact with this could be complicated. Mm -hmm. I, I personally, in my opinion, if a student doesn't take a quiz, they don't get to see the answers, but that's I'm just one voice, and I know plenty of instructors that disagree with that sentiment. Well, that, that's how it works already, right? You can't see any feedback if you didn't submit the quiz. Um, right. But so, they want a way to do that. Is one of, some instructors yeah. want a way to do that. that. That's a separate JIRA. I have that one somewhere, too. <laughs> uh, any comments from anyone on this? Is this something that people have concerns about or feel like this is a would be a nice feature to have anything we can share with the core team well just um just because it's samago and samago is so complicated already i always hesitate to make it more complex um unless it's something that's really um requested by lots of people. So I think my question would be, how many faculty would actually use this? Is this the majority of people that would want this feature or is it really a kind of an edge case? Right. That is exactly the way I feel about it, Wilma. Um, At Duke, I can't think of an instance of an instructor wanting this. Heather, have you heard of anyone? No, I have not. I think we may have had one person that mentioned this as a request at one point, but it's certainly not something that's come up frequently. Well, I don't know if this is even still current because since I don't directly teach courses, <clears throat> but <clears throat> a year or two ago, the issue was like when on the left-hand menu, you want to hide the tools <clears throat> from students so that they're interacting to the, with the tools through the lessons page. The uh, point was made to me that you have to leave the tests and quizzes open so that students can even see any feedback that's from true. the teachers. And yeah, that's and still I, true. And it's is still that an still issue. true? Yep. <clears throat> so having the feedback available. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is a sudden onset. Having the feedback available through the grading mechanism, like 
through the grade book or through the grade manager or whatever, uh, it seems like you can at least get the feedback out there without the direct question, um, I, I, which is not a solution exactly that I'm proposing, but do, I don't know how they would get the negative feedback without getting the whole quiz back, which is part of my original thing of hiding the tool so you can you can have it date managed and that kind of thing. I, um, I don't see how that's relevant for this. I mean, the whole point is they want to show feedback, but they don't want to show the correctly answered questions. Uh, right. I understand that. But it, I don't know how how you separate out the correctly answered question from the poorly answered question. But if the feedback, for That's instance, that is exposed in the grade book, says you got this concept wrong, go back to chapter eight and research it again and come up with a better answer. You know, that the feedback could articulate what it is the teacher wants the student to do to fix the problem um, without exposing the whole test. If, it, you, if they could get the feedback somewhere else. Um, so let me explain the use case. These instructors, we have four or five extremely vocal instructors who have students in large numbers, classes with, you know, 200 students, for example. They don't have the time to go through 200 submissions for every single quiz of 10 or 20 quizzes in the course and identify which questions the students got wrong and make comments on an individual student basis for every one of these students. That's the problem. Um, but they still want to give the students some guidance on questions they answered incorrectly. Uh, the workaround right now is extremely laborious. They have to export the CSV from tests and quizzes. They have to manually locate all of the questions the students answered incorrectly and delete answers from content that they answered correctly, um, and then upload it to a tool like Postum for the students to get the feedback. Um, so I understand where these instructors are coming from and where their frustration is coming from. And that's why um, I created this, this ticket, because we've had multiple instructors who are very upset about their inability to reveal the feedback that they want to to students. Are they making individualized feedback? In other words, in, in the feedback area of, <clears throat> of the quiz composition, you can have a choice of what you say when the question is correct or when it's incorrect. If it's incorrect, you can say this shows incomplete understanding of what the principles were outlined in this chapter. Go back and reflect and you know respond. However, that can be that can be automated. Yes, that's precisely what they want to show, but they do not want to show the students the questions that were answered correctly. They want to show just the questions that were incorrect so that the students can get feedback on the things they need to review without seeing all of the question content of the quiz. I, I'm just proposing that ultimately the goal be that th that feedback be revealed in the gradebook. There's still no way to do that without showing the questions. So, I mean, even if you were to reveal it in the gradebook, you'd have to have a feedback link pointing to a place that would take you to a question page to show you the question text and the associated feedback. Uh, if you're talking about a per question basis feedback, there already is a display of feedback comments on the assessment overall in the gradebook. That already shows up there. But again, that's an individual comment that the instructor makes on the total score screen in tests and quizzes for each student. <clears throat> okay. So, um, you know, I'm not sure that we've reached any kind of consensus on whether this should be something that the Sakai community works on. Um, it sounds like something that um, instructors at UVA are interested in, but it doesn't sound like anybody else has gotten questions like this or requests like this. I don't know what that means, Tiffany, but 
<laughs> I'm not sure what comments we could add here just to, you know. Makes sense. I mean, I know it would be complicated. Uh, maybe this is something we can do with improving export to allow export to um, show just incorrectly answered questions. For or sure. on the statistics, you know, on some of the statistics screens or something like that. I don't know if that would be a good because that is a way to sort of generally see what what questions most students are getting wrong. I mean, that's feedback for the instructor, really. Um, it could be a badly, poorly worded question or, um, a, you know, just a poor understanding of the concepts around that particular question. But anyway, um, yeah, I think this is, this is adding a huge amount of complexity to an already very complicated tool. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this might be something we could do uh, with as an export improvement to show only uh, incorrectly answered ones. Um, as an option you know. for yeah, uh, and then And then they would be able to, you know, to make it an option in the export and then have them able to import that into a tool like uh, uh, post them. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah, I mean that was the other thing I was thinking about is as a possibility for a way to address this. Okay, cool. I don't know. We have six minutes left. Uh, so, do you want to withdraw this? This uh, Jira. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it hurts to leave it there. Um, maybe other people will want it in the future. Like okay. I said, we've gotten a lot of requests, um, but at least to me, five, four or five is quite a few uh, <laughs> for a single, you know, feature in a few months. I mean, that's, it seems like a large volume to me, but maybe mm -hmm. I'm wrong. Yeah. Sometimes it does help to be specific about how many requests. Are they all in the same department? a lot. <laughs> Sorry? Are they all in the same department, Tiffany? That's what I was just wondering. <laughs> no, actually, we have, uh, I mean, I think they may all be arts and sciences. We've had like biology, statistics, I don't know. <laughs> They're all large classes, that's for sure. Hmm. Yeah. Just, just checking to make sure it's not one instructor being voiced through it's multiple insane. instructors. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I don't think these guys would know each other necessarily. Maybe they do, but. <laughs> okay, we might have time for one more. Uh, we have five minutes, so if we want to try. If, if I could make a, you know, um, advocate for the last one on the list, just because oh. it should be pretty quick. Yeah. Um, we have a, a client that's actually interested in potentially funding this one, and we just wanted to get a feel for is there a consensus on how it should be handled ideally. And it looks like there were already um, some comments in the um, in the JIRA itself about um, maybe the ideal way to do it, and I just wanted this group to kind of read through that and see, you know, does that sound correct? Um, is that the way you would want it handled? In which case we can go ahead and estimate it. Um, or if people have concerns that aren't reflected in the comments that maybe um, we could bring them up now. This is a, this has been an ongoing problem for a lot of instructors. Yeah. So I'll try to summarize. The, okay. Basically, the images and quizzes are problematic for lots of reasons, and I won't go into all the reasons because that would take too long. Um, but the um, proposed solution here is kind of twofold. One is um, that when you put an image in a quiz, um, it goes into like the attachment area that's kind of hidden, that hidden repository of files and it sort of travels with that quiz as opposed to being linked to um, a resources item which could be deleted or could be in the wrong course or could be um, accidentally revealed to students outside of the quiz. Um, and the other piece of this is the preview function. Currently now when you preview 
a test as the instructor if it's still going to show you everything that you have rights to see. So it's not really a true preview because you might have rights to see a file that students don't um, because of the location of the file. Um, so that was also a piece of this, that the preview should be improved so that it's a true preview of what an actual student, not the instructor, would see. Um, it's, a, it's a twofold. It's yeah. the preview uh, uh, and changing how those images are, are stored. Yeah. So how can you call it a preview if the instructor's not seeing what the students are going to see? Well, that's what they see now, and it's called preview. Yeah, I know that's called <laughs> preview, but it seems like a misnomer. Yeah, um, it does. Because if, you, if you're not looking at it the way the students are going to look at it, you can't tell that the students don't have permission unless you go to the additional step of view as student. Right. So, so I think that the first component, making sure that images that have been embedded, linked, or whatever in a test are stored within the test and not elsewhere and not available anywhere else outside of permissions of the test is the most important piece of this. Because if the images are stored attached to the question itself, then wherever that question is placed in a test, the images will go with it and, and it, it won't be as much a concern. Yeah, so ideally, if that is true, then the preview should be accurate by default. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It would just be open to or available to any user in the site would be the one check. Anybody no, with access to that particular assessment. Right. Yeah. OK, yeah. That one. With current access because, to the assessment. Because that would be the only place they would be able to see it. Right. I right. love that. OK, so everyone's good with that. You don't think that people would want to swap out images in mass and resources and then be upset that it didn't update their quiz or anything of that nature? It might be confusing to some because you could have a map or something in in a lesson or, you know, that you've got stored in resources and you want to bring that same map over to quiz how well they studied it. And so there could be some kind of crossover confusion there that you have to store it differently in the test than you do in the in the rest of the course. I don't see why it would be. I, I don't see that being a point of confusion myself. I think that's probably how most instructors assume it works and then they're caught. Right. But so when they try to upload the image from resources, it works, it doesn't work. It, it says, oh, you can't do that. You have to upload it from your desktop. Well, no, yeah, it, it should works. still let them attach the image or embed the image, however they're going to put the image in there. But instead of storing it, you know, as a link to the file and resources, it would attach a copy to that assessment. Uh, okay, gotcha. It goes to a hidden location, like when you attach an, uh, an image to an email or something. It's my vote. And we are out of time. So, All right, thank you guys. So yeah, I can tell our yeah. folks to go ahead and estimate. Although I do have one last question on that. If you've got an image that is a lot, like it's 20 megabyte image, is there a way to bring that down so that you don't double your storage on that image? Uh, not with this particular feature. So I think we'd have to kind of tackle that if it came up. Would it count towards the quota? Does the stuff, it, does stuff that gets attached and hidden count towards your site quota? I don't think it does. No. Um, I think because, that's the content thing. Yeah. That's just resources quota. Yeah. There's Although your different. overall storage, it counts for that. Yeah, it will count for your, your just your sheer server storage, but right. it won't count for the course site quota. Right. Uh, it's something that they would want to do while developing this and then QAing this is making sure that those same permissions of it being like in that hidden folder and only available to those that are in the quiz, that that carries over if it's imported or copied um, because we don't want it to 
be kind of hard coded to that course. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or if you share an assessment with somebody that yeah. they you would be able to get in there and get a copy of that. And question pools. I mean, that's that's been the age old problem of this that you know, it's making a reference to somewhere. So if, even if it's coming from a question pool and that's been fixed largely, but if the instructor who's creating the quiz in a site doesn't have access to the original site that housed the image, then the images are gonna be broken for the students in the new site. So yeah, if, if it could just store the image internal to the quiz and the same thing for attachments, like if you have a Word document attached to a question, um, if it attaches to the question itself, um, I think that's that's the key. Thanks, everybody. And Wilma, this was a great question. I hope it I hope it pans out because that would be a really big win for everybody. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> um, so next meeting is Wednesday, February seventeenth at ten a.m. Eastern, and we're going to invite Marty back to um, lead a discussion around permissions and gradebook for TAs and cover some more Jira's. Hopefully, thanks everybody. Thanks. Bye. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye. 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 -bye.